Good afternoon. Hi, it's Michelle Sandlin. Welcome to No Filter with Michelle Sandlin. Today, as my very special guest, I have with us in the virtual studio, comedian Sarah Colonna. Sarah is a best-selling novelist of all things, as well as a wonderful comedian. You may remember her from Chelsea Lately. She's currently being seen all over the country as a uh, as a um, part of her book tour, as well as her stand-up act. So I want to welcome you, Sarah, and uh, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Great. Well, I really appreciate you being here. And uh, what, I, what I didn't share with you is that this is kind of the first official episode of No Filter with Michelle Sandlin. Um, so when this whole thing goes viral, you'll be able to say you were on the, the very first one and, and you were a part of it. So, nice. uh, so that'll be pretty that. cool. Yeah, cool. That'll be pretty cool. All right, great. Well, um, one of the, um, I guess the premise behind No Filter is uh, that there is no filter, there's no net, there's no regret. We just do it as it goes and, and see what happens. I want it to be very candid and unscripted and obviously no filter. So maybe a good place to start is with your new book, which I finished a couple of weeks ago after um, getting a lot of tweets and, and Facebook messages uh, posted all over the place from you about promoting your book, which is really great because uh, I uh, sometimes need a little prompting, and I, I have to be honest with you when I say I read it. I didn't actually read it. I audibled it. I don't know if that's uh, a word. Um, maybe uh, it'll be in the next dictionary or something, but to me, <laughs> audibling is a word. It's definitely a, a verb in the way that I use it, and uh, the, the really cool thing for me and be able to um, listen to your book, obviously, was that you narrated it. So it brings this whole other, I think, level of um, entertainment value to it. And I, I really enjoyed it. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your journey in writing the book and, and what you're doing right now kind of on your tour to promote it. Yeah, um, well, it's cool. I did, I, I did read it, and I know that some people don't read their own audiobooks, um, and, and they were like, oh, do you want someone to read this for you? But I just, for me, I thought that would be so weird because it's such a personal book, and the stories are, are pretty personal that I thought, I don't know. I mean, I'm fine with other, other people reading it, obviously, because I wrote it, but not maybe putting their voice to it. So, and um, I actually did not know if I was going to enjoy the reading of it process, like the, you know, recording it, but I loved it. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it was weird because a couple, like I got emotional at one point and then they were like, they just kept it. And I thought, I thought, well, shouldn't we do that again without me like crying? It was my chapter about my cat passing away. And they were like, no, we think it's great. I was like, you sickos. But, um, you know, uh, writing it was interesting. It was my second book. Uh, and the first one, you know, I learned a lot from writing that. So this one, I think the process of it was a little bit easier as far as just the structure and how it goes and when you turn it in and having your editor give you notes, all that stuff was a little more familiar to me. Um, but the writing part is still found to be sort of the same journey, which was uh, I do a lot of it when I'm traveling because that's a good time to write because you're alone on the road and I'm like, I'm in a hotel room in the middle of Toledo, might as well write, you know? So right. um, yeah, but it was a little bit different this time for sure. And I felt like I learned a lot from writing my first one, and I was able to sort of implement those lessons for myself. Um, even writing-wise, I felt like, even though I'm very proud of my first book and it did really well, and I have such great feedback on it, I feel like this one is is stronger. I came out mm -hmm. as a stronger writer. Well, definitely very inspiring. I enjoyed reading it, and I probably should have mentioned your first book, uh, Life as I Blow It, debuted at number five, I believe, on the New York Times bestseller list, which yeah. is pretty great accomplishment for a first, uh, first try. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I definitely wasn't expecting that. So that was pretty exciting. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. Well, so what's, what's next? Do you have more books up your sleeve or, or what do you, what do you think your next venture is? Um, it's funny. Both times I've written a book, I've learned that right afterwards, I'm like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> um, but that's not true. I love doing it. Uh, I think what, I think the hardest part, I mean, other than the obvious of the writing it, honestly is afterwards getting the word out and, and touring with it and wondering if people are liking it and you know luckily with this one I've had so much with both really I've had so much positive feedback and um, so that encourages you to want to do it again you know but I for both times the minute it's come out I've been like oh no this is there's so much to do now it's not over because you know um, obviously a lot of authors 
just they have their books and and that's you know and they're not comedians as well touring with it and trying to do all these different things so um it was a little scary but i then when it starts um i love it so much and then it's cool to go on tour because i go on stage you know and i do my my stand up and then the book is completely separate from that so afterwards i get to sign it and sell it and people come up and they've already bought it sometimes and um and it's like I get to do two different, like both things I love, but they're, you know, I'm doing them separately. I'm not on stage talking about my book. I'm doing a completely different act, you know, so it's kind of a neat way to, to tour. Right. No, absolutely. And I think one of the cool things, too, is, you know, your ability to to promote it yourself a little bit out there on social media. Like I said, that's how I came to know about it first. I didn't I didn't see it on Audible first. I saw it on your Facebook page and I thought, ah, this is the next book I'm going to Audible. So um, I think that's really cool that you have the ability to to be able to do that. But um, also, um, I think it's a great way to be able to connect with your fans. So um, obviously, Twitter has been an important part of your life. Um, I, I know the story behind you you being introduced to, to your future husband there. So uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk a little bit about kind of the, not the role that social media plays in, in, in sort of pairing you together, but just social media playing in, in your life now is just sort of an expected thing as well as, you know, just how we live our lives now. Yeah, it's interesting because it is such, such an expected thing. And there is, you know, a part of me that when I have to promote stuff, I get like, oh, people are going to get sick of me, you know. But I try, I make such an effort to make sure that I'm also, you know, not just promoting, you know, that I'm making right. jokes and interacting with people and, you know, talking, putting whatever out there, you know, that you need to put out there. So, um, and I, and I truly, uh, knock on wood here, haven't gotten one tweet, even when I was promoting my book, I never got one tweet of anyone going like, okay, we know, you know, so I was glad that that support was there because I know that people can get a little pissy um, mm -hmm. about that, even though it's a free social media website and you should be able to do whatever you want, right? But, you know, people are the way they are. But um, it's also definitely an interesting thing for, I mean, I feel like that's where I get I hear about news first now on Twitter, you know, because people start talking about something the minute it happens. And that's really interesting. And I think it's got to be really difficult for, you know, writers of like newspaper writers and, and they have, you know, they're struggling to get their, you know, get people to, to hit on their story. And it's like, I've already read it 16 different times on. Um, so social media in that way has is, is uh I mean, it's great, but it's also, I'm sure, difficult for, you know, everyone's sort of scrambling to get to something first. Um, I think that even with um, comedians, I think you're always kind of scrambling to make the best, you know, Kim Kardashian's ass joke or whatever. I mean, not those anymore, really, but you know what I mean? Trying to get their first, um, their opinion out there first and, uh, uh, or their joke out there first. Um, but I love it. I love being able to interact with people and I love um, the instant feedback that you can get on Twitter. Um, and I love that when you need to block someone, you can. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a very handy tool, to say, <laughs> yeah. to say the least, to say the least. Well, um, I know you obviously have a very busy travel schedule. You're, you're on the road a lot. You, you're performing all the time. And, you know, people never ask men, how do you balance it all? They just assume, you know, okay, life balance uh, for a woman, you have to have superpowers. Uh, which is not really true. I mean, we, we balance things as well as men, but um, how do you keep up with, you know, everything you've got going on? Because one of the things we haven't even mentioned is the podcast that you do with fellow comedian uh, Josh Wolf off the yeah. rails. So you've got a lot of stuff going on. So how do you keep it all together and going so great? You know, um, it de sometimes it definitely gets challenging because you feel a little spread thin, like, you know, and listen, everyone works hard and in every job there's its challenges. But I definitely, it's different when you're, when, like you're saying, you're doing a bunch of different jobs. You know, I'm not going to an office and doing this one job where I know everything is, which can also be obviously equally as challenging. Um, but my, yeah, you just sort of have to, because sometimes you're not sure, am I putting the right amount of energy into each one? You know, um, am I treating each one as if it's the only job? You sort of have to, um, which can spread you a little thin. For sure. I think the travel is probably the most difficult part, um, even though it's also one of the greatest parts because I've been to so many cities now and I travel so much and I've seen so many cool places and some uncool places. <laughs> um, but I think that part is, is, is both rewarding and, and tough because especially, 
you know, before I met my fiance, but even still now, um, you know, I'm still traveling alone. I mean, there's, there was, uh, oh, we didn't, I didn't mention the, the, that part about him on the Twitter thing that you said, I forgot, but yes, he tweeted me and that's how we initially met. It was, you know, someone, he asked someone for, to set us up basically. And the guy, it was Ross Matthews, another comedian. And he said, just tweet her. And so it did start there. So that's another interesting tool of social media. Who knew? Um, but you know, traveling alone a lot before that was, um, you know, there were times you're enjoying it, but there are times you're like, oh God, I'm in this city for five days and I, you know, I'm not the person that just like stays holed up in the hotel room unless it's like crappy outside and I'm going to need to write or something. I like to get out and about and I do it by myself constantly, but every once in a while you're like, oh, it'd be nice to have someone with you, but you're working, you know, but this tour um, John, because he plays football, he plays for the Seahawks. Um, right. He was off for the, the first couple of months that my tour started. So he was actually able to go with me. And it was so interesting. Um, I really thought, I don't know if I'm going to like this, if he's going to drive me crazy, because I'm so used to like my own routine when I travel, and then I do this, and then I go to work. And um, But it was great. It was actually really cool to have someone there. Um, I don't know how much he enjoyed it. He says he <laughs> loved it. I'm sure he got sick of watching me do stand-up 75 times a month, but um, but it was really cool. And I found, you know, I think, I don't know if there's ever like pure balance in it and, and uh, you just always have to be doing your best to make sure you're putting the right amount of effort into everything, you know? Right, exactly. Well, and, and of course with both of y'all being very recognizable, I would think it must get more difficult for you to be able to just walk around amongst those regular folks. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that hard for us. I mean, he got in Seattle for sure when I'm up visiting him. Um, but it's kind of really cool to see like people stop him and and they just say thank you and you know they they they're still thanking him for the Super Bowl ring from you know two years ago and thanking him for playing for the team and it's so cool to see you know something like that like it's so different than what I do or what a lot of you know it's not necessarily paparazzi coming after trying to get the greatest shot of Angelina Jolie it's like someone just going up and saying thanks man you made my year or this was so fucking cool and you know yeah. I've, I've been a Seattle fan my whole life so I love seeing that that's really cool that's really cool so with so many things that you've already done what would you say are the top couple of things that are on Sarah's bucket list um, definitely, I I sold a show off my first book, um, and it didn't end up getting made, which happens. Uh, it's it's hard to even sell it, so I'm so grateful that happened. But I definitely want to do that again with this book, and I think with this book, there's a lot of things that people can relate to um, as far as being in your 30s and trying to just trying to figure it out. You know, I I, my, I know it's a lot about relationships, but it's also about family and friendships and everything, and I think you know, something like that on, on TV, um, done in a funny way, but with a little bit of heart. Um, I would really like to, to create that. So that's what I'm working on now. And yeah, that's well, I'm definitely sure on my bucket there. list. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll get there. I, I think that's, that's a wonderful thing. Well, I think one of the other things that might be on your bucket list might be a walk on part on general hospital. And of course, if you get that gig, you have to get me on there as well. I think that's something that we both have very much in common. We're huge GH fans. So yes, I know you were, yeah, I know you were recently um, invited onto the set by your friend, Nancy there. So you want to tell me a little bit about that so I can live vicariously through you yeah you know it's funny as tweeting about GH and whatnot then all this as we call it GHS insiders um, they eventually kind of like follow you on Twitter which is another so funny thing about social media you know and so and then I ended up meeting Nancy who plays Alexis Davis um, for lunch one day and then I was like I walked in and I was like oh like <laughs> it's you you know I just I felt like I knew her and I totally don't so I was like the crazy soap fan um, and then she ended up coming up with this idea to do something called GH Now, where she was hosting a show, and and she was just trying to really show because she has such a personality outside of being on a soap opera. She's so funny, and she's uh, and then she's also very political, and she has all these. So I think she wanted to create something where these all these soap actors who were taken so seriously could show their fun side, and then so she had uh, myself, and then and Jimmy Pardo, who is another huge fan of GH and a great comedian. Um, we went and, and did this fun thing called GH Now with her. So we got to shoot it on set. So I was like, oh my God, I'm in the hospital. I was like, I went on the elevator. I was like so excited to get on that elevator where I have so much shit has gone down. Um, 
But I then I you know was hoping, of course, my fingers are still crossed that they're gonna like come on, let me go. I just want to have like a cup of coffee at Kelly's, you know, and uh, and be on in a scene and do something ridiculous. So hopefully that comes. Yeah, that's that's definitely my dream as well. And uh, I, I actually have a couple of GH people that follow me on Twitter as well. Um, Ryan Carnes, who plays the very very hot hot. Do you know who it is? Yes, I can't think. Why can't I think of his character's name though? It's um, Dr. Lucas Jones. Yes, Luke. Yes, yes Lucas. Yes. So um, I think he's going to be on my show in the next couple of weeks. So I'm looking really forward to that. I had a phone conversation with him about a week ago, and just a super nice guy. And I visited with um, Kathleen Gotti, who plays uh, Liesel Albrecht. Oh yeah. The. Uh, um, the very evil character that she plays and of course she's nothing like that in real life which is very cool so i'm writing an article about her but i just think it's been really cool how the uh cast of general hospital is really keen to connect with their fans in a in a really fun way so uh yeah, yeah. that I, I think that'll be a lot of fun jason thompson is another one that's like that Captain yeah Drake. yeah he's fantastic and really and like a such a nice guy and um when i was there i met tyra christopher too another nice guy mm -hmm. you know yeah, it was really cool to to see all these people, and you're like, I've been watching you for years, you know, and know. now we're just like talking and joking around, and you're not doing anything serious or killing anyone or cheating on anyone. You're just yeah. hanging out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm embarrassed to say I've been watching it since I'm 14 years old, and my husband, he wouldn't like it if I told you this, but he watches it with me religiously every single night, and we watch it almost like we're watching sports with all the running commentary, what what's about to happen, and it's it's really pretty funny it, it's uh, that's what we that we're that's what we do for excitement uh after nice. dinner, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that, whatever, that's works, whatever keeps the marriage alive <laughs> <laughs> exactly well you were even uh had a, a small part i think on days of our lives not that long ago too right um yeah it was actually it was a while ago it was a few years ago and oh, i yeah i didn't watch the show but i i so i can't even recall the characters uh who i played his wife but apparently his wife only made one appearance because that was me and um <laughs> And it, but it was so much fun. It was like really fun to be on a set, and they were, you know, everything they say is so serious. And then the minute the cameras cut, they were like laughing, and I was like, oh my god! So you guys are totally aware that this is so over the top, you know? Like they're they get it. They totally know what they're doing. It's awesome. Oh, that's that's hysterical. Just hysterical. Well, let me ask you this, and and uh, you know, when I look at you, I, I look at somebody who's who's very successful in a lot of different areas. But I know we all have different feelings about ourselves and what we want to accomplish. When you think about your career, do you think I've made it, or you think that you you've not yet there because I think of you as someone who's made it. Um, I I would have to, I guess I would have to say to a degree for sure. I mean, I guess there's so many levels of, you know, what we do. There's a there's someone like right now, like Amy Schumer is at the top of it, you know, and and um and there's uh, someone like Chelsea, you know, there's like these names that everyone knows and everyone talks about, and um, and there's obviously so many more examples of that, but um. You know, and then there's people like me who like I'm working. You know, and to me, I've made it because I'm working. To me, I'm I'm not bartending anymore. I'm making a living doing what I love. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm still right here when I wish I was here. But then I have to put that in perspective and realize I'm I'm making a living doing what I love. Like I really shouldn't be uh, ever complaining about anything. Right. You know, you know it's like uh, keep that in perspective. And so sometimes I have to remind myself of that though. Yeah, I know that, that that definitely makes sense. Well, I know this weekend you've got a uh, show coming up at the Hollywood Improv, right? Yes, yes. That sounds to me like a really cool venue. So what what's like your favorite place to, to perform and, and do you have any funny stories to share? Well, that's actually one of them. The Hollywood Improv is one of them because it's like one of the first clubs I, I did like a big showcase in. It's one of the first clubs I completely completely fucking bombed in uh, it's and then full circle it's the first club on my on my last book tour on my first book tour that I completely sold out headlining on my own so it's had like many levels in fact even this weekend coming up even though I know it's gonna be great and and you know it's the Hollywood improv there's still always like a little bit of like the girl who bombed in there or there you know there's like different emotions like i love this club i can't wait to perform in my hometown i mean well it's not my hometown but it is now it feels like it so um you know and then there's a little bit of anxiety of like 
oh, but what if it's not busy enough? And I mean, that, but I do that with every, every, sh every club and every show, honestly, because you just never stop really mm -hmm. worrying about ticket sales. You just want everyone to be happy and the clubs to be happy. Um, but it's interesting. It's like, I feel like it's almost like a little, you know, like a, I get so excited because it's like, I'm here, I'm in town, I'm performing at the Hollywood Improv. Like, that's a pretty cool deal, you know? Like, that's great. Um, yeah. So, and then there's nerves that go along with that, but that's everything. Um, there's so many clubs I love, like Addison Improv in Texas is, in Dallas is great. And um, uh, there's the Helium Comedy Club in Philly that's great. And there's one in Portland that's great. There's just a lot, I mean, I couldn't even name them all. There's so many great clubs. Um, and uh, the, the, the Funny Bone, which is a chain of clubs, like, the people that I've, I've never been to one where the people aren't just like the nicest, coolest people. And uh, so that, that says a lot, I think about the owner and how they're run. And so it's nice, it's nice to go and see, you know, you get treated well at these clubs and, um, and I don't think that always happens. So yeah. it's nice. That's very cool. That's very cool. So where would someone find out where Sarah is going to be playing if they want to know if you're coming to their hometown? Of course, I want you to come to Houston. You talk about Dallas. So we're not that far, but we're totally different. But I know. Well, I was I was supposed to be at that improv once and then something happened and it uh, they moved. They, they booked, I don't know, someone bigger probably came in or something. I don't know what happened. Uh, and then I haven't gotten a new date yet, but I hope to get one soon there because I would love to perform in Houston. And um, I've performed also in Austin and that is a great club, Cap City, a uh, wonderful club. And yeah, sarahcolona.com, I'll be, I'm doing, uh, you know, kind of winding this uh, tour down for the summer. I'll be going to North Carolina next month, and then um, in July I'm going to Birmingham, which is going to be cool. I've never been there. I mean, my, it's, I don't know about Birmingham in July, but I'm going to enjoy it. Um, and then uh, through the fall I'll be back everywhere. So it's sarahcolona.com is where all my dates are. Okay, well, I'll be looking for a date in Houston. I'm going to I'm gonna hold you to that one. And, of course, you're welcome to come on over to my house and uh, <laughs> hang out. Nice. And hang out. You know, that, that would be General great. Hospital. Yeah. That, absolutely. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be fair for me to ask you all of these questions without asking you if there's anything you want to ask me. I, I'm, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything, and I'll, I'll be glad to answer it. Or nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, what got you, what made you want to do this? What got yeah. you interested in, in, in interviewing people and, and getting those interviews out there? Yeah, you know, so um, I write for the newspaper, and part of my job in doing that is I'm interviewing people almost all the time, and I've had it sort of go beyond what I'm doing for the newspaper, and I started writing articles about people really just for love, not for payment, because I just really enjoy that aspect of being able to reach out to people and understand what they're doing and, and what their life is about and, and so forth, and it really all started with my tweets uh, with General Hospital folks and the fact that they were receptive and I had asked a couple of them if they'd be interested in being on my show and then I decided well I need to have a show if they're gonna be <laughs> on the show so that's kind of how this whole thing happened um, did a, a lot of um, you know googling as you do to, to figure out you know what direction you want to take it and stuff and really my my life is very much out there online I'm easy I'm easy to find in terms of you know what I'm about and so that's kind of the idea of no filter I um, live my life kind of out there and pretty transparent and uh, this seemed like a great opportunity to to not just you know, be out there myself, but to bring people in that have touched me in some way or that I connect with or, um, you know, whatnot. So that's kind awesome. of the, the beginning of my journey here, but uh, it's been very cool to have you as my first official, you know, guest on the show. So, yeah, so well, really, thank you. really, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, um, if you do plan on coming to Houston, you, you have to let me know. And I know we're just about out of time here because we've got about 30 minutes. And I know you've got something you've got to dash off to. And I've got to go pick up my parents because it's crab eating night. And you're from okay. you're from the <laughs> South, so you understand. So, yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, you better get on that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like a, an, an important deal. So, anyway, I want to thank you again very much for being on the show. It's been absolutely a pleasure getting to visit with you and, and hearing more about your life. And uh, we'll certainly certainly continue to follow you online in your career and my next book that I'm going to read is your first book since I haven't read that yet and by reading it you know I mean audibling it nice <laughs> perfect <laughs> all right Sarah okay. thanks so much and until next time we'll see you bye-bye take care bye-bye